Hey guys, Tammy Trayer, TrayerWilderness.com. Hope you guys are doing well today. I'm going to wait a little bit here and see if some of you are able to jump on. I'm a few minutes late. Uh, it's a very dreary day here in northern Idaho. This has been a very weird winter here. It is rainy and miserable. I would so much rather have the snow than the rain and it just makes it so much damper. I like the crisp cold. It just makes it so nice. It's a dry cold and it's just it's comforting and it's bright. Today it's just very miserable. It's a good day for a nap which is exactly what the mountain man is doing. He is under the weather so keep him in your prayers. Um, just that kind of weather where colds are able to set in and a lot of stuff is traveling around so hopefully you guys are all healthy and well. I see a couple of you are joining me. Um, who's out there? Uh, where are you from? And uh, how is your new year going? Hopefully you guys are on track with your scheduling and, and trying to get organized. And I want to point out, first and foremost, always, your, your schedule is going to get hijacked a lot. And the thing, key thing is just learning how to pull back into it and, and getting yourself back in check. So you're not alone. Um, my schedule is constantly hijacked. My schedule is constantly uh, thrown upside down. So you're not alone. So definitely trust in that. Um, today what we're going to talk about is um, learning how to pull your schedule back in after the unexpected has happened. Um, we all have the unexpected happen as we talked about last week. And if you didn't get a chance to watch that, I encourage you to do so. And I also wrote a post uh, this week that I put in as the resources in the description below, which is uh, seven tips to keeping yourself better organized. And I feel that's, that those key things are the most important things that you can focus on. Because um, like I said, your schedule's always going to get hijacked. Um, sometimes it might be longer term. Sometimes it might just be a, a day thing. Um, and, and if you have children and other people in your family that you're accounting for, you know, you're always going to have something that throws things off. So learning to roll with it is really important and, uh, and just learning to check back in and pulling yourself back into the schedule that you and the life that you want to live. So that is the key thing. And I'm, I'm going to do my best here. I'm having a flare-up myself today, so hopefully I am able to keep this rolling. This won't be a lengthy one as the others have been. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I also wanted to mention that I'm going to start doing some webinars, uh, and that will be advertised on the Facebook page itself, so you'll know when the events are coming and that you can sign up for them. They will be free. Um, <coughs> excuse me. It just gives me an opportunity to um, sit down like this and, and uh, pull some more people in. Not everybody's on Facebook, so uh, I want to touch base with other people as well. So I'm going to venture into that as well. Probably doing, I'm going to say one a quarter, um, maybe one a month. We'll have to see how it rolls, but I'm going to start off with the quarter and progress into it. So how are you guys doing with your schedules? Talk to me. Uh, I love hearing from you guys and getting your feedback. Um, how are things going with you with your schedule and keeping your New Year's organized? Um, keeping up with creating new habits for your New Year's resolutions and uh, staying on course. Also, right now, I just wanted to mention this. Oh, hi, Candy. <laughs> I'm hoping I'm not getting the cred too. <laughs> I'm trying to uh, be proactive with my teas and all kinds of other things. Thank you though. <laughs> I'm glad to have you joining me. So one of the things that you need to do when you are pulling yourself back into your schedule from the unexpected, and again, whether it's a day thing, whether it's been an illness, um, as you know, I had an illness and it, it consumed me and it, it put me flat on my back for over six and a half months and it required um, a lot of finessing, a lot of growth, a lot of patience, um, a lot of um, God working in me to help me to understand that I was right where I needed to be 
and um, some of you out there have um, people that you're caring for so that also throws your schedule upside down and uh, it's you know when you're caring for sick individuals um, it's no different than sometimes having children and having to care for them and um, kind of learn the same things I think you know that we are um, stuck in our circumstances and that's not always a bad thing you know some people get really um, upside down over circumstances like that but sometimes learning that we're where we are meant to be um, can really really be helpful and um, finding peace in that like I mentioned last week it can be the hardest thing you know having the unexpected happen whatever it is and learning to find peace in it because it's disheveling our lives but in turn it's also teaching us a lot of things and um, it's important that we we find that peace in our circumstances because sometimes the unexpected can last a long time and um, while we're in and dealing with the unexpected you know being kind to ourselves and um, accepting our circumstances and doing the best that we can in our current circumstances is a very key thing it'll help you from hitting overwhelm help you from or I should say extreme overwhelm anyway and um, just help you kind of learn to roll with where you're at and and while you're in that situation you know you you do the best you can do well while you're rolling out of that situation you also need to do the best that you can do and roll with your circumstances because trying to come out of an unexpected situation and then trying to um, go right back to where you were before is going to be I don't want to say almost impossible because that may not be the case for everybody but it's going to be really hard you're going to have to slowly progress into a, your schedule and learn how to be kind to yourself learn how to do take baby steps in reintroducing your full-blown schedule and and understand that maybe those um, circumstances that you were going through was trying you were going through were trying to tame you um, from being owned by your schedule so you know maybe what you went through was um, the purpose behind it was to slow you down and to make you realize what is more important in your life than maybe just wanting to feel busy we all want to be we all want to feel that we're useful and we all want to feel important and sometimes what happens to us is that I think we get so busy or attempt to be busy so that we feel useful when really our busy isn't producing anything other than stress for ourselves and that can be a hard thing to hear and a hard thing to realize but it's important that we do realize those things so as we come out of the unexpected taking baby steps back into getting into our schedule is important um, you know if we're breadwinners and and you go through these circumstances it can be really hard because you feel like you have the pressure of producing and and and, and sometimes it's hard to determine which is more important our self and our health or or that of our families or producing the money and unfortunately in the world that we live in um, we are forced to seek the almighty dollar which is awful and if you can get to a place where you live simply and you live with less you won't be as consumed by that so that's why we focus on what we focus on and try to live that way so if you can find out what your most important focuses should be and are and slowly progress yourself back into your schedule the thing is too um, it's real easy um, you're very welcome Meg Meg said very insightful thoughts thank you you and you're very welcome and thank you for joining me um, you know we learn things on our journey and because I have a voice I, I enjoy sharing what I've learned and and trying to help others because um, I see uh, we don't leave our homestead a lot but we see the world from a different perspective and when we are in it we see the world very differently than the average person because the average person is caught up in the world itself where we've kind of created our own little world and 
in seeing how everybody's, you know, running around like chickens with their head cut off, and it's not necessary. And we see people's focuses being, I don't want to say wrong, but jaded. And that's where this all comes from. Plus, being flat on my back and going through what we did for six and a half months and it being not just my ordeal, but my entire family's ordeal. And we still go through it because, like I said, today I'm having a setback. Um, I'm just very, my body's very inflamed. It causes me to go through uh, head fogs and brain fogs and just as odd. It, it, if you go through, um, Lyme disease or certain autoimmune diseases, you'll understand what I'm talking about. It's just an unusual thing. So when you go through all that and you go through it as a family, I mean, it's, it really threw us all off kilter. Uh, we all learned a lot, all learned different things, all walked out of it, um, uh, consuming different aspects of it. So that's what I want to teach on, and that's why I, I know what it's like when life goes upside down and when you need to pull the pieces back in. And as I was saying, I am a bread, I, I have been a breadwinner. Um, it was due to my um, ability to work from anywhere as long as I had an internet connection that enabled us to live this lifestyle and to start this lifestyle, which was an absolute blessing, and it was through divine intervention that it all took place. So, and then the mountain man built our home and built all of our structures here and really um, f formalized our homestead here. So we all had different roles. And then, um, you know, he got back into the workforce again, doing his um, blacksmithing and um, building homes and doing uh, construction work. So we all kind of play a role in in our survival out here which is awesome and um, it, it, it was very difficult getting back into a schedule um, figuring out what our purpose was what our uh, intentions were having a goal so as you can see being organized setting goals and and having a schedule really plays a role in everything not just in making a living but making a homestead um, helping things to run smoothly um, it's gardening season or well for me it is I am starting to formulate how I'm gonna plant my garden and getting my seeds organized and things and that also requires organization my pantry requires organization so that's why I started the year off the way I have so that you guys can get a bearing because once you are organized and have this under control to a degree you can move on to your the other aspects of your life and homestead that you can also keep organized and utilize in a very similar fashion which we will move into once we are through this section I'll go into some gardening and, and organization in your garden but really getting yourself back on your feet from the unexpected is uh, something that you should do in baby steps you don't want to overfill your to-do list and you don't you know just because all of a sudden things have changed you don't just go slamming nine million things into your to-do list and expect to get them done we all have the same 24 hours and remember folks you're not supposed to work the entire 24 hours we are supposed to sleep rest rejuvenate ourselves um, keep ourselves healthy so um, one of the things that I have included in the resources, as I mentioned before, is the link for the seven tips to keeping yourself better organized. In that post, there is a link to my daily schedule template for Evernote. I've been talking about Evernote, and it may not be for everybody. You may choose pen and paper, and that is perfectly fine. You might want to take a look at it. Maybe what I'll do now that I'm thinking about it, if you don't use Evernote or, but would like to see what I'm doing, I will do a photo of the um, what it looks like in the layout so that you can do it on pen and paper because it's what works for you but Evernote is a great tool for me um, it really enables me to keep a better handle on my schedule and you can find that by going to treyerwilderness.com slash Evernote they have a free it's free you can unless you are going to use it extremely heavily and use it with a business um, it's free so it's a great application and you can back it up um, I'm a web designer by trade, so I don't use online um, applications um, without considering the fact that I need to back it up at some point because I know how technology works. 
So it is a tool and an app that can be backed up so that you have you can put things back in place very easily. Um, but I encourage you to download that template and give Evernote a try. It, the whole database is searchable, so if you have photos that you put into a, a note and they have uh, text on them, it, that becomes searchable. It's very smart and it's very awesome and it really helps me because I used to do sticky notes and, and, and as you'll read in the post, and I encourage you to read it, um, it can get really ugly having a million and a half sticky notes and notes all over where if you keep everything in one place, you eliminate the search. That search is the biggest time hog I think people have is that we're searching for information that we recorded could have been years ago that's why I think Evernote is so priceless I keep track of all of our tires for each of our vehicles oil filters fuel filters um, air filters all in a note so that I if I'm out in the road and I need to get something I can easily look it up but not only that it's all recorded I don't have to go look it up every time the same applies for medical stuff um, all the supplements I was taking um, so you know these notes don't have to just be um, you know things that are running through your head this could be a means of keeping track of things that you go through all the time so that you don't have to look them back up Searching for things also is stressful, which none of us need any additional stress. Amen, Patty, and good morning. And that is so true. If we can eliminate all of that backtracking that we do and have one place where we store everything, and that's why I use Evernote the way I do. I keep doctor's information in there. I keep research information in there. How many of us research things? And and record it and then go back and try to find where we researched it and we may not use the research that we we went through right away but we'll need it later where if you keep yourself good notes while you're researching things you don't have to go back and start all over again you can just progress from where you stopped and that's what all of us do is that we're on this stinking hamster wheel digging for stuff and we gotta stop digging for stuff now I do do sticky notes and I have notes in front of me throughout my day because when I'm doing stuff sometimes it's cumbersome on it that um, to, to go into a note and create it and it, it may not pertain it might just be sloppy notes I'm making on the task that I'm doing and nothing may be worthwhile recording but at the end of the day I just look over what I did and if there's something on there that needs recorded I either write it in my to-do list for the day so it's searchable or I put it where it needs to go you know sometimes I'll be doing stuff on a blog post on gardening and then I want to go back and record it so I'll find my gardening notes and I'll put it in there you know if you can learn to become organized and keep everything in one place you will be so much better off and that that chase to find things will be over and that's why I keep recommending Evernote to you guys the same thing is true with Nosebee Nosebee is the one I mentioned before, which is my calendar app, and that is fully searchable also. So you can see the benefits right there. You know, if I have to go back and look at a, a, a calendar event and had notes in it, I can easily do so. The nice thing is, too, you can email yourself or send Evernote and attach Evernote notes to your calendar in Nosebee. That way everything's all in one place so that you don't have to go searching again. So I'm going to probably do some um, how-to videos on Evernote screencasts so that you guys learn how to use it and also Nosebee because there is a little bit of a learning curve, but it's not, it's not bad. And I highly recommend them. But taking baby steps, getting into your schedule is important. Stop chasing yourself and, and making yourself redo things over and over again. And... Um, being able to just start out slowly and not killing yourself, expecting yourself to go from an unexpected situation that may have affected your health or your well-being and, and trying to do it all right out of the gates. It's not going to happen, guys. It's just not going to happen. Um, I tried. Uh, like I've told you many times, I'm a go-getter. I'm not a quitter. I'm a pusher. And I wanted to get into and be able to dive right back in, and I and I couldn't. I my body needed rest. I actually have a lawn chair type thing that folds up in my office so that I can lay flat when I have to. And for the first year, I'd have to be working for a little bit, and then suddenly my I could just feel that my body needed to be flat. I needed to rest. I needed to give my body a break. Even now, sometimes my legs and my feet and things get sore if I'm standing at my standing desk. If I'm sitting, I can feel my shoulders and my back getting sore. I know you all feel that. 
Now, for me, because of what I went through, I do need to lay flat on occasion, but you know, for, I also need to exercise. So getting out and exercising is really helpful too. It'll help you de-stress your body if you're coming out of something that was unexpected and like I said, took a toll. Exercising is really key. We should be exercising every day. Drinking a lot of liquid is really important. I realized when I started using that app that I mentioned a couple weeks ago that I was only drinking a third of the amount of liquid I was supposed to be drinking and that's really not good and really sad. So we need to keep our bodies up to speed we need to give ourselves mental and physical breaks and that's part of it so you know if you're coming out of the unexpected take time for yourself you know this is no different than what I'm telling you to do on a daily basis schedule time for yourself schedule time for exercise schedule time to unwind and and your schedules coming off of the unexpected if it was something that affected you mentally physically emotionally even spiritually, you know, starting your schedule off slow and making sure you have more time in there for yourself and, and less time to stress yourself is going to be really important. And when you notice your, the schedule that I'm using, as I mentioned to you, and if you're, a per, if you're a person that can't handle looking and seeing this huge list, my schedule may not work for you because what I do is I record everything in there. I highlight the things that are important each day and only focus on those, but I keep a running list of things so that they aren't forgotten and that they aren't lost somehow when the unexpected rolls around. They're always going to be there, and when I have extra time in my schedule, those are the things I'll go to to work on and get taken care of. But um, having that running list keeps everything in one place, guys, and it keeps it in front of me that, like I said, I won't forget it. That is key thing so often how many of us I'm sure many of you can raise your hands it happens to me if I don't have this kind of a schedule in place I will you know lose sight of things and you look back and you find those things and it wasn't good that you lost sight of them there are a lot of things that you know may not be extremely important to be done immediately but they need to get done and so that's why I use the, the template that I do and I keep everything recorded and with Evernote you can copy it and move it into the next day and start, you know, change the date and, and you've got your to-do list moving forward so that you don't have to waste time rewriting everything. And um, it, when the unexpected happens, you're going to have to learn to just accept the fact that not everything's going to get done that's on your list for the day and that it is going to get need, it's going to need to be moved to the next day. So the key thing is learning how to cope with certain aspects of our lives instead of allowing them to stress us. And stress is, as Patty said, a, it's a killer. Stress can affect your body in such ways. It, stress can cause major illness. So to eliminate the amount of stress in your life is really, really important. And finding those tools and ways of coping with things to eliminate that stress is really important. I also have an essential oil diffuser in my office and I have a Himalayan salt lamp and they're both um, used regularly, when, especially on sunny days. Today's pretty dreary so I'm not plugging them in um, as regularly as I would being that we're on solar power. So um, using essential oils is a great way to de-stress yourself um, rejuvenate yourself rejuvenate your mind depending on the oil citrus oils are really good for um, giving you a better sense of well-being and um, helping you to de-stress lavender oil is really good to help you de-stress and just putting those oils behind your ear if you don't have a diffuser and just rubbing it in a little bit a drop on one finger will spread very nicely you can rub it on the back of your neck that is a great way to help you de-stress sometimes to cope with the things that are you're dealing with. We're all dealing with stuff, guys. Um, the Mountain Man and I are going through some pretty nitty-gritty heavy stuff here on our homestead that we are having to deal with and uh, figure out. And um, none of us I, are, are, are free from that. We're always going to have that. We're not promised that life is going to be peachy. There's always going to be things coming in and uh, sometimes ripping our feet out from under us. So how many of you have dealt with the unexpected and are there any tips that you want to share as to how you overcame and, and how 
you know, you found um, coping mechanisms, I would love to hear. Feel free to share. And if you guys are watching this after uh, and watching the replay, please don't be afraid to comment and share because I do see the comments and I will respond and I love to hear from you. And I'm sure many of the others uh, check back because they are part of this too and have already commented so or liked it. So they will see your comments as well. And guys, you can always email me at survive at treyerwilderness.com if you need prayer or need assistance or have questions. I try to answer within 24 hours. Sometimes it takes me a little longer depending how things are going here. We have a tight schedule on trying to keep up with everything that we do. So I try to keep myself de-stressed. So sometimes that is a little later that I respond, but I will respond to you. So the key thing is taking baby steps de-stressing yourself, trust, trying to eliminate the repeat performances and, and repeat searching and, and provide for yourself. When you catch yourself repeating something and digging for something or looking something up that you've looked up at least once before, you need to create a new note or a, a page in your notebook, whatever you're going to do, and, and keep track of that same information so that you are not repeating these bad habits because we all have it and when you have um, things available to you that can eliminate that it's key it's really key that will save you so much time trust me um, but the unexpected is going to happen just learning to cope learning to roll and and just slowly going back into things and not allowing yourself to stress so I kind of feel like I'm repeating myself here so I I will jump off of here if no one else has any questions or thoughts on this. And next week we will continue on with our um, living with intention and being true to ourselves and being true to Jesus as well and keeping ourselves organized and learning how this organization runs into every aspect of our lives and how it can easily make things so much nicer and freeing up our time that we have time to do what we want to so we can live intentionally. That's what it's all about, guys. That's what it's all about. Living with intention. Doing what is most important to us. And I really, truly believe that 90% of us, even more, 95% of us, are out there just running the rat race, missing our joy, missing the mark, missing the opportunity to live with intention because we are chasing the wrong things and searching for things over and over again, wasting our time. So... Guys, I really am grateful that you took time to join me today and took time out of your schedule that I know is precious. Let's keep doing this. Let's keep living with intention, and we'll do it together and continue every week, Wednesday, 1030-ish, because I never know what's going to happen with my um, internet. But guys, thanks so much for joining me. Have a great, blessed day and a rest of your week, and I will catch you next Wednesday. God bless.